I want them dead presidents. I want them pull up. Head spin. Get it, get fly. I got six jobs. I don't get tired. I don't get, I don't get tired. guys so we are going to do glutes today i'm going to start with my warm-up it is the same warm-up that i do all the time so i go and do lunges trying to focus on the glutes waking them up then i do abductors and then i do a little bit of a hamstring movement it just helps me engage with the muscle group before starting my workout so i'm going to go ahead and start with the lunges it usually takes me about 10 minutes and it's just perfect abductors now it helps me warm up the upper side of my glute I don't sit back all the way because it's too far away for me so what I do is I kind of sit halfway in the seat right here and then I turn my feet kind of like that to make sure my glutes are engaged and it's less quads knee and more glute I do usually 12 15 it depends and I try to not jerk the movement but more so keep my glutes squeezed all the way throughout And then this one is a super simple exercise, but if you are connected with your muscle, you're gonna be able to feel your hamstrings contract. And the only, the only thing that I want is to kind of like wake them up and get them ready so that I can jump onto the exercise. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna flex my knee here. I'm gonna feel my hamstring and glute contracting. And with body weight, no resistance or anything, I'm just gonna move up and down. And then I'm gonna feel here how my hamstring contracts. And I just try to keep that contraction all throughout. And this is just gonna wake up my hamstrings and get them ready. Usually do sets of eight. Hey, Titi me preguntó si tengo mucha novia, mucha novia. Hoy tengo a una, mañana otra. I'm drinking pre-workout to see if I can get through this. Um, as of Sunday, no more sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners, carbonated drinks, none of that. So we're only keeping EAAs, pre-workout, and protein. Those are the only powders and artificial sweeteners that we're keeping for now. And I think 10 days out, it will come out, right? Uh, in between sets, we're just gonna answer 10 questions that we had gotten through her Instagram and my Instagram, and we'll roll through them. So I'll just kind of ask as she's resting between sets because right now we're pulling back her actual intensifier. So I will explain what we've done to this point, but then I'll also explain like why we're pulling things back and taking out those intensifiers as we go through the workout, where they typically would be and why they're coming out. Ready?
Two. So, one question I get a lot is how many warm up sets you should do. I don't know if you get this a lot, but the best way to look at this is I think we're going to work up to just over three plates, right? Because she hit three plates last week, worked it out, progressed it outside of the rep range. So our goal is always to have a rep range and add five reps to that. And then when that happens, we'll add more weight. Uh, with bigger movements, it'll be a bigger jump. With smaller movements, it'll be a smaller jump. So if you're doing you know, 15 pounds for a dumbbell curl and you add five reps to that, you're not gonna go to 30 pounds. It's gonna be a very minute jump. Whereas here, because it's a bigger compound movement, we're gonna make a little bit bigger jump. So in terms of reps and warmups, things like that, the goal is to always have as little energy expenditure to the maximal, basically getting her legs stimulated and stimulating the areas we need to feel. Yeah, that and also feel the movement, like go through the motion of the movement to make sure that everything feels right. Like knees, hips, joints, like everything is actually ready to get started. So I do my active warm-up well, where my muscles are connected, but then this is gonna allow me to travel through the exercise before I actually lift the heavy weight. And you can see all of her warm-ups. Go ahead, babe. You can see all of her warm-ups. She's not actually expending energy. It's more just squeeze and getting blood flow into those areas. So that's the main focus that we're looking for, is just making sure that when she gets here, one, those muscles are activated, and two, she hasn't wasted any, any energy that could go toward these working sets. So right now, especially with her being actually very depleted, she's doing even less warm-ups. We just want to get to those top working sets and be done. So she's got maybe two more warm-ups and we're going to start working. Because you did three last week, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This will be your last warm-up. No more than three reps. So, if you probably heard, I kept yelling at her to stop because, again, this is so close to the working set weight that we're going to use. I don't want any energy expenditure. So, typically, I would not allow her to do any more than three reps, but she plays her music and doesn't listen to me. It's fine, but that's the goal. The reps should come down with each increase in load so that it's just your body getting used to your CNS, getting used to feeling that weight. So then, when you go straight there, because if she would have gone straight from one place, to three plates, it would have felt heavy. It would have felt crazy. So we want minute jumps and the jumps get smaller and then the reps go down just so you can feel that load. But first question of the day, would you ever consider moving up? No. I got that question and I get it. I still get it a lot. I don't know if it's a compliment or not because I don't, my heart is in bikini. So it's really hard for me to picture anything else. I love how wellness girls look. I love how figure girls look. They look amazing. They're, you know, like the hard work is absolutely there. It's just not something that I've ever wanted. Like I've never wanted to grow. And from the very beginning, I told John, I was like, I'd rather shrink and do what it takes to shrink and give away the muscle that I put on before I put on more muscle, just because I don't feel comfortable. It's not a matter of, ah, oh, you get fat in the off season, it's just I don't feel comfortable walking around that heavy. And I know I have to be heavy to be able to be competitive on stage when the time comes. So, no, I would never move up. I think as of today, I would probably stop competing before I move up to another category. And 
And I understand why everyone asks this, because if you look at what she's been able to do in 10 weeks since we started, she's actually grown in a caloric deficit. So I can see, and the conditioning she gets in, like we put the picture yesterday of her back and you can see her Christmas tree and she's leaner than a lot of guys. So I understand why people ask. Again, I think the heaviest that she's ever been, at least with while with me, is 130 pounds. And she was extremely uncomfortable at that weight. For her frame, she would probably need to be at least 140. And that's, I don't think she'll ever, ever let herself get there. No matter how lean she is or things like that, that's gonna be stepping on stage with at least 10 more pounds of weight. She could do it, because I can tell you right now, She's growing at a deficit, so if I were to just give her a bump in food and keep everything else the same, she would grow. So right now we will see how long she says I want to shrink and give up tissue because I'm sure, well, again, she's also three weeks out. She should be hungry, but her food is low. But the benefit of it being low is we're also able to manipulate the diet through higher carb base and things like that. But we'll see. And that's the thing. I feel like growing has never been an issue. We just haven't grown in the right direction. And I think that's why it's taking me so long to go grow. Like we, we had to figure out what grows real quick in my body and then bring that down and grow the areas that actually matter in my cat. And a lot of that comes to two, her actually understanding how to train things correctly. And we've had to adapt that a lot because I can tell you right now, she's hip thrusted a lot more weight than she's doing right now. And their glutes, glutes were not growing. And me forcing her to slow down and feel the movements and connect with them. Now her glutes have become a strong point. So we'll see, we're gonna do her top set here. What'd you get last week? So we're looking for an eight to 12 rep range. We're doing a 10 pound increase on each side. So 20 pounds total. And um, she's going to smoke these. Ready? Ti me pregunto si tengo muchas novias. Muchas novias. Hoy tengo a una, mañana otra. Me la voy a llevar la toa pa' un VIP, un VIP. Ey, saluden a Titi, vamos a tirarnos un selfie. Say cheese, ey, que sonrían las que ya les metí. Un VIP. Saluden a Titi, vamos a tirarle un selfie Say cheese, que sonrían las que ya se olvidaron de mí Me gustan mucho las Gabriela, las Patricia, las Nicole, la Sofía Mi primera novia en Kinder María y mi primer amor se llamaba Talía Tengo una colombiana que me escribe todos los días Y una mexicana que ni yo sabía Otra en San Antonio que me quiere todavía Y las de PR que estoy listas son mías Una dominicana que juega bombón, juega, juega bombón que mi bicho está cabrón yo dejo que jueguen con mi corazón quisiera mudarme con todas por una mansión el día que me case te envío la invitación muchacho deja eso ey titi me preguntó si tengo muchas novias muchas novias hoy tengo una mañana otra ey pero no hay poda titi me preguntó si tengo muchas novias ey ey muchas novias hoy tengo una mañana otra all right so that was her top set there I don't even know what you got. I think it was outside of the rep range. So probably a load increase again. But this is what I was talking about. And she actually said it yesterday. Previously in all of her preps, her weights would trend down. She would start getting weaker. And the reason we've been able to keep the tissue while getting leaner is because she's forcing it to stick around. So making sure she's progressing the logbook every single week. She's not going in and because she's tired, just going through the motions. That tissue is, we're forcing a demand for it to recover. So her body's not gonna be like, oh, well, I don't need this and eat away at that tissue. So that's the benefit of tracking a logbook through prep uh, or in, even in the off season. But in prep, making sure we're still forcing those demands for things to stick around is vital and unmatched. And I feel like it's, a, it's more a mentality that you're like, okay, calories are low, I'm tired, cardio's off, I'm leaner, so I'm just gonna back down a little bit. And I've done it, I've done it always. As soon as I get closer to prep, and then there's also like a, there's a fine line because you don't want to injure yourself right before stage. But that's why you have a coach that's going to call those shots. One, he's here so that I don't get injured. And then two, if I do get inflamed or start to hold water, then he's here to tell me, okay, we got to back down, which is what we're doing. 
Yeah, so in terms of actually, like she was talking about with the inflammation and things, typically she would do a back offset here. Go go walk. Yeah. She's got to hit steps. So I'm going to make her walk around and I'll explain a little bit more. So typically here, we would actually go into a muscle round, not a muscle round, a cluster set, where we would do a 30% load reduction. She would aim to get 10 reps rest 60 seconds and repeat for as many rounds as possible. And that's why it's called a cluster set. So basically 10 reps, 60 seconds rest, 10 reps, 60 seconds, and repeat until you can't get 10 reps anymore. Um, as she just said, I'm noticing that her body is holding on to inflammation because she does have three leg days. So I'm actually gonna pull that. We're gonna pull those intensifiers. We're gonna do a 30% load reduction. She's just gonna aim to be five reps better than she was. And the goal here is to not have so much inflammation within those sets that her body actually starts to drop some of the water retention. She also has to get up very early, so I don't wanna to ask too many demands of her. With food being so low, her body wants to fight her. So these are things you need to pay attention to. Remember guys, like, you shouldn't be changing things at two, three weeks out in terms of like exercises and things like that because one, what forced the muscle to grow is gonna force it to stick around. Two, if you're changing things, you don't know where that maximal load is. So you're putting a new demand on your body with less food and less nutrients to recover. So you could just overly tax things. Now, like I said, we would have an intensifier here, but she's so lean, things are starting to, we gotta pull back. So we're not gonna do an intensifier here. 30% load reduction, and she's gonna aim to be five reps better. is because I was hitting steps somewhere. But I've been doing cardio five times a week, I would say. Four to five times a week since I can remember. But the treadmill in the middle of COVID, the best thing, investment. The thing was, is I started to take over her last off season with the intentions of I was just gonna do her off season. And then probably four weeks in, another coach took over. So this off season, I'm gonna pull her cardio down quite a bit. She doesn't have too much cardio right now. It doesn't go higher than 40 minutes. Um, but she is pushing a lot of steps right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is decrease just meat. I want her to be able to relax. Then from there, we'll play around. But the goal is to get 
get her to about four sessions a week just for general heart health. Exactly. We want to keep it in and then digestive pur purposes. There's so many, I mean, you don't need to be a genius. Google benefits of heart rate being elevated. Doctors tell, you know, elderly people they should be working at a challenging heart rate three to four times a week. So for heart health and digestion in the off season, I'm going to try and get her down somewhere around 8K steps and 150 calories. And in the off season, I actually enjoy having the cardio because you're not hitting it. Such a high target. Right now, yes, my cardio isn't necessarily too long, but the target has been the same since I started. So I have to hit 300 calories. It doesn't matter how long it takes me. Because I'm already waking up, waking up super early, I don't have 60 minutes in the morning to hit 300 calories. So even though the cardio time hasn't necessarily increased too much, I have to push myself to get to this 300 calories because it's not as easy to burn them anymore. So for instance, if I started at 10% incline and three, 0.0 speed and that got me 300 calories in 30 minutes great right now i'm already at 15 percent incline almost 4.0 speed i am going for 36 minutes to be able to meet those calories so yes the time hasn't increased too much but the intensity of it has increased a ton for sure so that i can hit that target that we have yeah, and that's the thing. She's at 16K steps right now, so it will literally cut her energy expenditure in half. And then I'm gonna cut her caloric expenditure through calories in half as well. So she's at 300 calories I asked for. I'll go down to 150. When she starts putting some body fat percentage on and things like that, heart rate will elevate quicker. She won't have to kick the intensity up, and hopefully that will only take about 15 minutes. So four 15-minute sessions is the goal for her. It's actually a great way to start the day. Yeah. And first Personally, I like starting my day with that. All right, so we're done there. Second exercise, Bulgarian split squats. This one is actually really high. I don't know if we're gonna use it. There's a smaller one that's like half as tall and it feels better, so we'll see. Usually when I do Bulgarians, I do body weight first for at least eight reps. Same thing, just to go through the motion and make sure it feels right. And if I have to adjust, then I adjust with my body weight and not when I have a weight on me. Um, it, the platform feels a little high, but I think we're gonna be able to make it. I think the key here is I go down straight and then kind of keep in mind that you're pulling yourself up almost forward to try and keep that tension in the hamstrings and the tines and the glutes. I think you can move it up a tiny bit. My feet. It's, it's a little tall. I want you to focus on shifting backwards a little bit more. Like that? Yeah, uh, that's fine. I meant like your actual foot placement. However much you want it angled, that's a- Oh, forward like, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because you were going more straight down, remember it's back at an angle. There you go. Yeah. Feel it more? Yeah. So that's what I was saying is before, she was traveling straight down, whereas now if you look at the angle, it's actually going back this way. And what that's doing, the plate here, essentially what it's doing is it's lifting this, which elongates the hamstring. So as soon as she actually starts, it's putting her in the correct motion. So what I want here is for her to not go straight down. You'll be able to see it here. So instead of going straight down, she's actually traveling backwards. And then like she said, it's a pulling motion forward with her hamstring and glute. Now this part right here is key of traveling backwards because that's going to stretch that glute. And also shout out to, uh, shout out, if I could speak, blah, blah, blah. shout out to Quality Muscle for these dope shirts. He sent two for me and two for Andrea. Instead of only fans, it's only carbs. And that's gonna be the motto this off season because I'm trying to get huge. And then she'll just be only pizza. <laughs> Where are you at steps rise? What do you think I am? Uh, with your 4,000. Um, no, cardio took me 5,000 this morning. So, I don't know, maybe. Well, I was checking your vascularity. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 15,000? 17,311. So you need another 4,000. I need to get to 21. Right, go walk to the turf and back real quick and then we're gonna go. 
and so that probably sounds so dumb right now, but that's gonna be like an extra 100 steps. And those little things add up, that's caloric expenditure. Whether you look at it like that or not, it's the least taxing form of, cal uh, of caloric expenditure, because she's literally just gonna walk there and come back, and that's more calories burned. So, take your pick. You can do more stairs or you can walk. <laughs> Fifty last week, so we got a match. Because we're gonna pull the intensifier, okay? El corazón, ay, no te enamores de mí, no te enamores de mí, ay, sorry, yo soy así, ay, no sé por qué soy así. Hazle caso a tu amiga, ya tiene razón, yo voy a romperte el corazón, voy a romperte el corazón. No te enamores de mí, no te enamores de mí, no, sorry, yo soy así, ya, no quiero ser así. Good, come on, finish, finish, finish. Yup, yup. Seventeen. Go walk. Let's go. We put in the work now. We put in the work now. Good. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Keep going, keep going. We're coming for an overall, not a pro card. Let's go. Good. Good. Yep, perfect. Shift back. Good. Keep that pause there. Good. Come on, babe, finish, finish. Eight glute sessions after this, make them all count. Yep. And technically at that, you have six, because peak yeah. week doesn't count. Come on, finish, finish, let's go. Come on. <laughs> yep, let's go. Go on. Oh. It's all mental. It's all mental. It's your mind. It's your mind. Here's where he plays the most. And when he screams at me, I'm actually playing music. So half of the time I don't, I can't hear him. Because if I do, all I want to do is punch him in the face. No, no, let's stay here. Just have another set. This is where we would typically do your intensifier, remember? Go walk, get me to the turf and back. Because you did 17 with that, I can't have you get 30 reps with this. So what I'm gonna have you do is aim to get 17, but we're gonna do one and a half out the bottom. You know what I'm saying? So you'll, you'll go down, Halfway up, back down into the stretch again, all the way up is one. So that will allow us to, again, not have to get as many. Otherwise, you're going to aim for 30 something reps. So, so. If, if this is not an intensifier, what is this? It's just quarter reps. An intensifier would be, it's, it's going to put you in the stretch position longer, which is what we need. An intensifier would be like a drop set or things like that. So, is this kind of like a pump work? 
So it's essentially a back offset without you having to hit 30 reps. So previously she would be doing a rest pause set, which would be using the same weight. She would aim to get a total of 30 reps for three attempts. So it could be like 15 reps, rest 15 seconds, seven reps, rest 15 seconds, and then get three. Um, whereas that's too much intensity, again, we're gonna pull all those back. So instead of doing a back off set, a straight set, we're gonna do one and a half reps out of the bottom. So she'll go down, halfway up, back down, all the way up, and that'll be one rep. And so I want her to match reps, but it'll be with a lighter load. Good. One. Back down. Perfect. Let's go, let's go. Straight reps, straight reps. Feeling in your quad? I mean, it was on my hamstring too, but I my quad's really pumped. Okay. How many did you get? 10. That's fine. Did you feel the stretch a lot? Yeah. Okay, good. I like the first seven to eight reps. Good. Come on. Come on, come on. Finish, finish. All right, let's see what other questions you got. Oh my gosh, this one, this one was my favorite. What's the biggest learning? What's the biggest learning curve curves with this prep, coaching, training, etc.? So the biggest, biggest learning it's more personal because he's my coach and it's also my husband. So I learned the hard way that I need to split the two, okay? So when he's my coach, we have to talk business, like coach and clients. I've had coaches in the past and I've never questioned them. Like whenever I ask a question, it's out of curiosity, but never questioning the process or, you know, their protocol. With John, it turned a little bit more personal because he's my coach, but he's also the person I would complain to if I didn't like something. So if my coach asked me to do two hours of cardio, he would be the one that would be like, well, fuck this, I don't think, sorry. <laughs> I don't think this makes sense, blah, blah, blah. I would still do it, but he would be the one that would get that complaining. Now, he's my coach and it's like, do I complain to you? Like, can I talk to John, my husband, and complain and cry about it because I'm still a human and it still sucks or, you know. So I feel like the, the biggest learning was that. We had to sit down and be like, okay, yes, that's right. I wouldn't question my coach, but I would also have you to complain to. So I need to be able to have the two. I need to be able to have my coach and I need to be able to have my husband because he's my best friend. I don't complain to anybody else. So I needed the two of them so that I could vent pretty much. And that's been, I would say, a learning curve on both sides, not just for her. Being able to find that middle ground where now it's almost like, can I talk, she literally will say, can I talk to John, my husband, not John, the coach right now. And I need like to tell you, I'm fucking hurting. And 
and that's kind of like how we've been able to balance it but there's been moments on both sides where it's very challenging nothing to the point where I think we were ever ready to quit but it's been a learning curve for sure because I don't have this relationship with any of my other clients for obvious reasons Aaron's probably the closest but uh, in that sense it's definitely been challenging so one other question though that we got which I think is a really good one Someone wanted to know, what is your favorite glute movement? Oh, that's the thing. Before John, I would say probably hip thrusts because you have to do them. They, they just work. Once you know how to do them, they work. With John, I would say I've never connected with Bulgarian splits the way I do. So even though they're very humbling and it's kind of like a mental challenge when I get to this, I've been able to feel my tines like I've never had before. So I do think they work if you nail the mechanics of it. That would be one. And then definitely the V-squad, but I think it's more, more of an ego thing. Like I can feel it, but I've also been progressing so much on that one that it's like I'm looking forward to next week to do it so to, to, to comment on that when we started i think you're doing like two plates and you saw today she did three plates and a 10 on each side so of course seeing yourself progress in the logbook is also going to build your ego but you're going to enjoy those movements it's like you almost look forward to them like she was saying and i don't believe there's one exercise fit at all you know where it's like oh this is what you need to do to grow your glutes i think you have to connect with it so there are exercises that i can't connect with them for instance like the cable kickbacks I just don't I feel it on my lower back I've, I've tried all the variations and it just doesn't work so I use a machine I make sure I connect with it and that's it so I feel like the main thing is finding that exercise where you can connect with your muscle and, and run it through it doesn't have to be a hip thrust if you can't connect with it or maybe you just have to work on your form and find a way to connect with it if you really want to do it but I don't think there's one exercise that's gonna get you Laura Lee glutes. and just because she to. feels it doesn't mean you need to yeah so find a movement that you feel and just drive the progress into the ground that's the easiest way to put it it's like she said it's there's a million ways to get to that end goal i can tell you right now just because she feels it does not mean you should and it's typically the girls that i see hip thrusting the most weight that have no glutes your glute realistically is the tiniest muscle on your body like back and legs are much bigger so it doesn't take a lot of weight that's like seeing the person who curls 90 pounds usually has the smallest body Steps because we're doing everything else but activating that muscle so easiest way to think of that so she's not gonna take any warm-ups here at this point this is the end of the workout she's gonna do three rounds 20 reps if you watch the other YouTubes I talked about this I'm a big believer in metabolic work so at this point she's already fatigued we're just trying to force as much blood in that muscle in a shorter period of time so it's literally gonna be three sets of 20 reps with 60 seconds in between so it's gonna suck, heart rate's gonna go up, so there's some caloric expenditure, but the amount of blood we're gonna force into that muscle within a five minute window is gonna be so much. We're gonna target it, but we're also gonna keep in mind the fact that my quads should not take over the whole exercise. They are a muscle, like they're gonna help me out if I fatigue, but I just don't want them to be engaged from the beginning. If they engage towards the end, that's fine, but if I'm feeling them too much at the beginning, I'm stopping because I don't want quads. We don't, I haven't trained quads in forever, and we want to keep it that way. With bikini, it sucks because it's like such a fine line of you can have quads, but you can't have too much. So she used to be that person who could only connect with her quads and it's taken forever to get her glutes to catch up that now we're trying to actually shrink her quads. So she doesn't have a single quad movement in her three leg days. Really focus on the stretch here. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Deep stretch, stretch. Good. Come on. Come on.
Good. So again, 60 seconds right now, you can see heart rate's elevated. She's definitely starting to feel the pump. So we're just gonna let her heart rate to come back down. And again, this is not really something we're looking to progress too much on because her quads will take over. It's more just, we're trying to drive as much blood flow into those, and this will actually help with recovery too, but it's also gonna make sure we're not overstimulating. So, let's answer another question. This one right here. Hola, NK Categoria. Is that <laughs> read the one it, you read it. <laughs> no. Hola, NK Categoria, vas a competidor. Hey, competidor. we're killing Gracias. the Spanish game. What category I compete in? I compete in bikini. Which again, sometimes I walk in and they're like, oh my gosh, are you figure? And I was like, well, shit, it's here where I cry because I shouldn't look like that. I shouldn't look. I mean, I wish everybody could just see me and be like, oh, that's a bikini competitor. But we're working on it. All right, let's go. Remember, stretch. Good. Right there. Bump them out. Right there. Don't lock out. Good. Good. Come on, babe. Finish. Finish. Good. Really stretch. There. Knees to shoulders. Knees to shoulders. Finish, finish, finish. There. Come on. Eight glute sessions. Eight glute sessions. Make them count. Good. Don't lock out. Yep. Yep. Finish, 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 finish. Come on. Okay, so what was the macros on your high carb day? The result is insane. That's from May Sova. We actually did two back-to-back -back high days. I think I looked the best after the first one. I was tight, I woke up super hungry, so I felt better. It was 325 carbs. 125 grams of protein and, and I think 32 fat. So the fats are low for what I would like, but the carbs are really high and it doesn't feel that way. Like, John has it where I have a little bit of rice and I have jelly, then I have rice cakes. That way it kind of like just digests well and it doesn't sit in my stomach. But like I was saying, if we are carb loading to the show and we do it through these clean sources where I'm having oats and cream of rice, we will definitely do it days in advance so that I digest everything. And then the day of the show, if we do carbs, they're gonna be much simpler carbs, easier to digest so that they don't sit in my stomach. Cause that's the worst feeling ever. The other reason that fats are so low is because of that exact reason, is it does slow transit. So we don't want that to happen. We want the food to just be absorbed, go. And then the protein would probably drop on show day too. Let's go, last one, come on. Good, stretch. Knees to shoulders. There. Come on. Good. 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 Finish, finish, finish. Come on, come on, go, go, go. Pump it out, go. Right back down, go. Breathe, breathe. Yep. Finish. Yeah. This is your done. This is your done. Go, go, go. Come on. Go. Finish for me. Finish. Yep. So as I was saying, you can see there's a lot of work in a very short period of time. So the goal is not a ton of load, it was more just as much blood flow into those legs as possible. And that's gonna help with recovery, but the pump is gonna be crazy as well. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Don't rush, slow touch, brown and white. I go country, grab and buy. 
We can go bust, eye for eye We can lose trust, quite wrong Fizzy pop, where you they go, go We they go up, catch my vibe Let me go off, blam the trash Man, it's so tough Alright, yo, put the belly on the body, make a catch See no watch, now she wanna give crutch Boy got peas, now she hopping in the pod Man, a real life sugar gal, I'm off get what When she want dark, tell her meet me at the top Switching lanes the other day, I seen her waiting for a bus Maybe this a month, clear sweater Diesel denim, buy another one, my pockets fat like heather Neck froze like I don't know no better Benzo truck, white seats and they leather Go broke, never, on my grind She make it clap like I'm Busta Rhymes I got the juice, so 